Hello everyone and welcome to a new vlog. It's Saturday so I did a little bit of filming and then had some confusion and then my friend that I was going to a party with cancelled at the last minute and then I've been getting ready and while I've been getting ready I've been listening to the audiobook for When the Moon Was Ours by Anne-Marie McLemore. I also noticed when I picked this book up from my shelf because my shelf is organized by authors that I own three books by this author and I've never actually read her so I'm glad I'm finally getting on that and I don't know what time I'll be home at tonight. Realistically, I don't think I'm going to have much energy after. So I'm going to go home and try maybe read a little bit more of the audiobook. If I have enough energy, I'm going to try and read some more of Fire Falling by Elise Kova. Definitely, I have to pick that book up at least for a couple pages tomorrow. I want to be at page 100 at the bare minimum by Monday. So yeah, those are my plans and that is my Saturday. Hey everyone, it is Sunday afternoon, technically. I am just taking a day off of me day and yeah, that's just happening. So when I got home last night, I was able to read a little bit more of When the Moon Was Ours and I actually just finished it. It's a little bit after 12, I didn't get up to like 11 or so. So I actually read this pretty quick. This is a weird book that like, I don't know that I'm in a position to make any like re reviews or like critiques of it it's just that kind of a book so I think I'm gonna have to like figure something out for the wrap up but I would definitely recommend this book for sure I am I made like a big bunch of all of a sudden I was just like craving butter sh um, brown sugar waffles so yeah so I wandered around and found a recipe and made some cinnamon brown sugar waffle batter and I have like a single like just a little iron like a little mini one so it took me like <laughs> like an hour to make all the batter and everything but now I've got waffles for the rest of the week for breakfast which is actually really good and convenient so I am going to eat my breakfast slash lunch now and I'm going to watch one of the greatest movies of all time Shrek because that's just what I watch on my me days and then after I watch the first Shrek I am going to be picking up Fire Falling and reading at least to page 120. That is my firm goal for myself today, and I'm going to make sure I do that, because after I do that, I'm going to reward myself by watching Anastasia, which is like my favorite animated film of all time. It's got the Russian-y stuff, so obviously, I think it's got to be Anastasia's my first one, then Tangled, and then Shrek, I think. Oh, wait, no, I forgot about Road to El Dorado. Ah, oh, I don't know. That's like the top general five. And then I start breaking into Ferris Bueller and Hocus Pocus. But yeah, so that is going to be my Sunday. And then I will, I don't know, maybe give an update just to like verify that I've actually read Fire Falling before I jump into my second movie today. But yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just taking a chill and a me day. And I just kind of needed that. I think I am going to be calling it a night on Sunday now here. I watched my movie Shrek and actually did a little bit of cleaning and cooking dinner right now. And I got to page 171 of Fire Falling. So I've caught up quite a bit. It's really, really good. I'm just going to be putting it down. I'm quite tired and just eat dinner and I think kind of pass out pretty early. I don't know. I'm just so tired that I think I'd fall asleep while watching Anastasia. So maybe I'll watch just some like catch up on. Oh, I'm like three weeks behind on Outlander. I just realized that I got some episodes to catch up on on that, actually. Maybe that's what I'll do tonight. So, yeah, that's my Sunday. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend, too. Hey, everyone. It is Monday evening. I am just checking in before bed. I went to the gym and work and everything like that. And I came home and did some reading and watched the interview of Prince Harry and Meghan and their engagement announcement. And then I watched an episode of Outlander. And I think... That's a pretty successful day for me, really. So I am ending the day with about a third of the way in on Codename Verity. I'm very angry that I took so long to read this book because it's very, it's amazing, the writing and like the story and like nothing crazy is happening, but it's just so well written that like, yeah, so I would definitely recommend this one so far anyways. I haven't had a chance to pick up Fire Falling yet today and I'm going to bed now. But I don't have quite as much going on tomorrow, so I think I'm going to try and read maybe to page 200 or so, and then I'll be able to power through the last 100 pages or so in the next day or so following that. So that'll be good. And yeah, that is my Monday. So it is Tuesday evening. It's uh, almost 11. And uh, I finished two books today. 
they both just destroyed me over the course of like the last three hours. So I just finished Fire Falling by Elise Kova, and oh my god, does she know how to write cliffhangers? And my heart was already kind of broken because of the book I finished earlier, but like... I don't even know what to say to this book. I was originally like, oh, I'll get to page 200 tonight. And, um, I couldn't put it down. I was going to go to bed at like nine. It was like two hours ago. But I couldn't put it down, so, so I finished it. And I regret that immensely right now because now I have to go to bed with my heart broken. Oh, jeez. Why does she do this? So I definitely have to read Earth's End right away because I can't put this off for honestly a week, let alone the same amount of time I put between Air Awakens and Fire Falling. I, I, I don't, okay, yeah, so I have to, to start this tomorrow, because I just feel really empty right now. So this is the third book of, <laughs> of, of the Air Awakened series. <laughs> I would recommend it, despite my current emotions, but, uh, yeah, oh wow. Uh, I'm getting a little teary-eyed with the ending of Fire Falling, for sure. This entire situation was definitely not helped by the fact that I finished Codename Verity about two hours before, about two hours ago. <sighs> this is a very weird week where, like, I don't know how I'm going to review some of these books, because, like, this one as well is one, it's not the same, like, topic as... When the Moon Was Ours, but these are very difficult books to review, I think. Um, but yeah, so that was that was my Tuesday. I got my heart ripped out by two books, so Codename Verity and Fire Falling. I am going to, I th yeah, I have to start Earth's End tomorrow, at least do a couple chapters, because, oh wow, that ending. And, um... I don't know about audiobooks, because now that I'm done Codename Verity, I emotionally can't read the sequel or the prequel novel that I have of this series as well. Uh, it just, if you've read the book, then you know why. I just need a little bit of a, of a second <laughs> to, like, intake this one. Maybe, I'm debating maybe, hmm, I think maybe for audiobooks, I will look at either When the Moon, or The Girl Who Drank the Moon, or The Legacy of Kings. I think I'm going to go with The Girl Who Drank the Moon just because Legacy of Kings is the start of another series that I haven't gotten to yet and I'd rather finish a standalone book first. So I think that's what I'm going to go with next. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was my Tuesday. I haven't had a reading day like this in a long time. Hey everyone, it is Wednesday afternoon, evening, I just got home from work, and actually while I was at work today, I had to go to the public library to do something else, and while I was there, I walked past the bookshelf, and I noticed on the bookshelf, especially in the most wanted section, which is all, normally all the new releases, they had a book that I wanted, and that was available. Our library tends to, like, be, like, three or four months behind on publications, and then, like, there's all, by that time, there's, like, 50 people on hold for it. So I was pleasantly surprised when I went there and I saw this on the shelf, The Revolution of Marina M by Janet Fitch. I am so, so curious about this. If you've seen any of my past videos, you, I, I've kind of explained this before. My first degree was in Russian history and this is a story about a woman who is upper class but wants to kind of join the revolution during 1916 when all the chaos in Russia starts with the world, First World War and then kind of this transition into the Soviet era. So it is a thick book. It's like 800 pages, but I don't even care about that. I'm just so, so interested in this. So I'm going to think, try and find a way to figure it in over the next like 
month or so into my schedule and maybe see if there's an audiobook too to kind of help me along because it is long but I am just so so interested and I've heard nothing but positive things about this book. If you've watched my unboxing video from Hootloot which I will link in the description box down below you will have seen me get this book Beast Made of Midnight. I am planning on reading this book in December for my Yule Ball Bingo. I've heard very not great things about this book but I am very curious about it. It's, I think, Nigerian influenced folklore, and it's got like sins are created, and there has to be sin eaters, or there's monsters, or something like that. And I'm just really, really curious about it. So I'm really excited to finally give this one a go. And even if it's not fantastic, I'm gonna keep the book because it's so pretty! Ah! Uh, even like the spine, they did a beautiful job on the spine. And after yesterday, I mean, I was pretty shot uh, emotionally. So physically, after I go to yoga tonight, I am going to come home and I definitely have to pick up Earth's End by Lise Kova and read at least a couple chapters because the cliffhanger on fire falling like broke me and I had a dream last night. Well, it was like a cry nightmare and like, uh, I just had this feeling too in fire falling that it was going to be like kind of like a Sarah J Mass, A Court of Thorns and Roses ripping your heart out when like when the relationship changes, spoiler, from Tamlin to someone else, which will remain nameless, I guess. And yeah, so I just need to read this. And like, I know there's magic, but like, I don't think there's going to be like a people coming back to life situation in this whole chaos. And like, the ending was like, oh, so I don't know what's, well, I mean, like, after you read The End of Fire Falling, this title makes so much more like, oh my God, this is going to happen. So there's going to be vengeance and like, I, I just, I am so excited for this. This morning while I was getting ready for work, I don't know why, I just suddenly woke up and I was like, yeah, I want to start Scarlet by A.C. Gawhin. Gawhin? So I am, uh, oh, actually a little over halfway through. So I'm going to come home and I think make some dinner after yoga and everything and listen to the audiobook more. I may actually be able to finish it because it's not a super long book. It's like a Robin Hood-ish retelling and... So far, it's pretty interesting. I mostly want to read this book just because this author has a book coming out in, like, January or February. Yeah, I think it's, like, Reign of something or whatever, and it sounds like Elementals or something like that, which sounds very interesting. So I just want to make sure that I like the author's writing. So, yeah, I am going to try and maybe finish, finish Scarlet tonight and definitely at least start Earth's End because I'm just not okay with how Elise Kova ended that book and... She hurt my soul. You can go on the list. It's like, it's like Dumbledore getting killed level heartbreak. Like, oh, I guess that's kind of a spoiler. But I mean, I don't know where you live if that hasn't been spoiled for you yet. So, so that is, that is my Wednesday. Hey everyone, I'm actually doing a last second update on Wednesday. Yeah. So I originally went to the gym and then I got there and then our yoga teacher called in sick. <laughs> so I just like ran on the treadmill for a couple minutes and then justified that that was enough of a workout. And my trainer is going to yell at me tomorrow. That's going to be fun. But either way, I did some running around, and then I came home, I did some editing, and while I was cooking, I finished the audiobook for Scarlet by... Ooh, there we go. Scarlet by A.G. A.C. Gone. It wasn't as good as I was expecting, and I had some problems with it. I don't know that I would continue reading it if I didn't already have the full trilogy, but... Yeah, I'm still interested in the sequel that's coming out, or not the sequel, her other book coming out, though. So I'm going to debate it, and I think I'll explain more in my wrap-up once I've been able to, like, mull it over. And I actually just got a notification that finally, oh, I've been on the wait list literally since the day it came out. Uh, the audiobook for The Alice Network by something Quinn, Patricia Quinn or something like that. I'll put the cover there. The audiobook finally became available. I was literally, when I signed up, I was like number 32 in line for like two copies. And normally people get the audiobooks for like three weeks at a time or so. And it's finally here. So I'm going to start that audiobook in the morning. It's not super long. And once again, it's a historical fiction. So I'm just on that sort of a binge, I guess, apparently right now. So I am going to eat some dinner. And I'm going to try and read up to page 50 or so of Earth's End. Because... I can't get the ending of Fire Falling out of my head. It was in my head all day. Oh. But yeah, so that is the end of my Wednesday. Hey everyone, it's Thursday. I just got home from the gym and I'm very proud of myself. I've dropped down to 272 pounds. So 
It's like uh, I started like with my trainer at 281 and then today I signed up. They're doing like um, the first three or like the three weeks of, of December, basically. They're doing three one hour sessions a week and they're doing like a boot camp kind of group training thing to kind of like I think they're calling like kick the 10 before Christmas kind of thing. So I signed up for that. And then our gym every first Saturday they do. 10 o'clock at noon and at 2 o'clock they do like a group training session that you can sign up for free that's included in your membership. So I have that on Saturday and then on Sunday I have yoga and then on Monday (laughs) I have, um, I'm taking a 6.30 a.m. training session with with the trainer for the group thing because it's starting for the December and then I have to fly to Edmonton. So I'm going to be very busy over the course of the weekend, but I'm really happy with that and getting into the to the workout habit. I've noticed, especially with my diet, I being at work, like I get into this routine of like, you know, breakfast, you eat at this time kind of thing that when I'm off that I, I tend to like totally bail and go a different way on that. And I'm off for like most of December. I'm not working for about three weeks with like vacation and overtime to use up and all that stuff. So this, I think, will help kind of keep me on track in those three weeks when I'm kind of not as going to be as calendar locked down as I am uh, when I'm working. So I'm really, really excited about that. I also, I'm about, according to my app, I'm 36% of the way into the Alice Network by Kate, Katie Quinn, Kate Quinn. And uh, I started it this morning, or no, late last night while I was cooking dinner and... So far, I'm really enjoying it. So it's a it's an interesting story. I love female like World War II spies kind of thing, thing. And there's like some issues that have been brought up, especially with women, that are still prevalent to today, which was very like kind of kind of sad when you think about it. But yeah, we'll see. I also last night I know I sat down in bed. Like I remember sitting down holding the book, and then I woke up with my alarm going off. So I think I fell asleep like literally as soon as I touched the bed, and so I didn't get a chance to read anything at Earth's end. But I'm cooking dinner right now, and I'm listening to the Alice Network. And um, actually, it's not even 8 o'clock yet, so I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to eat dinner and listen to more of the book, maybe watch a little bit of the Cooking Network while I'm eating. And then I'm going to pick up Ursan for sure, because I feel so much less tired today than I was yesterday. So that is my Thursday plan so far. I'll probably check in right before bed, because I have a little bit of time to get some more reading done. Hey everyone, just closing up my Thursday. So I got to 51% of the way through The Alice Network by Kate. I keep forgetting if it's Katie or Kate. Kate Quinn will say. It's not the best historical fiction I've ever read, but it's definitely not the worst by any means. And it was definitely a good pick-me-up after Scarlet was... I mean, Scarlet wasn't horrible, but it definitely wasn't the greatest book ever. So it was a great pick me up. And once I hit 51%, uh, actually pretty good timing because I was basically done eating. I picked up Earth's End by Elise Kova. So this is book three in the Air Awakened series. And I got to page 49. So we'll say 50 because I end at chapters. I can't stop midway through chapters. That's just how I read. And yeah, I'm very glad that I picked it up because the like first chapter kind of like helped me like helped my brain like like not fix but like it it it, like picked up and gave some clarification to the ending of fire falling so i'm really happy i did that and i'm gonna try and pick it up again tomorrow evening because i don't have like the gym or anything i just have to come home and vlog a little bit and then edit the rest of the vlog and then upload the video and yeah so i'm really excited i'm definitely not going to be done it in order to do it is a part of my wrap up for this week, but I think I'll be able to finish the Alice Network tomorrow because like I said, I'm about 50% of the way through. Yeah, I think I'll be able to finish that tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. So I was just looking at my social media about just as I was going to sleep and something popped up on it. It was a post from Angie Thomas. If you don't know who Angie Thomas is, she was on the New York Times bestseller for like I think like six months or something like that this year for her debut novel. I'll post just a picture of what she she posted on social media, which popped up on my on my news feed. But the gist was schools in Texas have decided to ban the book that she was on the New York Times bestseller for called The Hate You Give. If you haven't heard about this book, I very highly recommend you looking into it. And if you are alive today, this is a book you need to read. It does not matter where you live geographically. 
it doesn't even matter where you kind of like stand on certain things. This is a book that, you know, even with myself as a, I like to consider myself as an ally. I'm out there. I'm, I'm all for supporting everyone that, you know, there's no racism and, and homophobia and bigotry and, and all these different problems that unfortunately we have going on in our world. Even with myself as an ally for this, you need to read other people's perspectives. You need to listen to them. Not only do you need to just like support them and, and, and speak for them as well, but you need to learn about their experiences to, to get a better understanding of exactly what you're fighting for. If you haven't read that book, you're missing out. It, it doesn't matter if you like contemporaries or not. That is not the point of that book. You need to read books like The Hate You Give and Dear Martin. It, they're just important. And I am honestly so proud of YA that they're publishing books now that focus on prejudice and, and, and like I said, racism and homophobia. and But th things like The Hate You Give, it, it gives you that perspective of, you know, what it's like in, in the situations of police shootings and, and not having the privilege that I do. I'm very happy that, you know, I, I don't live in, you know, we don't have the same direct identical issues in Canada that, that there are going on in the United States with something like Black Lives Matter and Hands Up, Don't Shoot and all that stuff. But I mean, we are not by any means perfect when it comes to things like racism. We just had our prime minister apologizing for the decades of, uh, of, of, of firing of LGBTQ staff members. And we have immense problems in Canada still to this day about racism towards really tons of people, but specifically indigenous communities is, is, is a big focus that I've, I've, I've had the kind of sad opportunity to to witness firsthand and trying to work with those communities now to to reverse that. I think the decision to ban that book all they did was prove that the book did right. I don't know who made the decision. I think it is not only just as a librarian, it was well before I became a librarian. Banning books is wrong. And you can just look at like who has banned books in the past. It's to suppress information. If that book makes you uncomfortable, that is on you, not on the book. And you need to read that. Something like The Hate You Give, of course it's going to make you uncomfortable. If you look at the politicians, they are, no matter really the geographic area or the state, they are predominantly white men. And honestly, I have no doubt in my mind that ha that had some role to play with it. You know, we still have schools to this day trying to ban to kill a mockingbird because it makes people uncomfortable. That doesn't matter. Your comfort level of this book on a topic like racism does not matter. That is not the important part. And it's not on you to decide that you are uncomfortable with this book so that no one else should read it. I also don't understand the point of banning this book. It was on a New York Times bestsellers. It's also being made into a movie with several like large cast members attached to it. So you, th people will have to actively go out of their way to not read it or watch it. Just in the end, I, I think, you know, if anyone is actually watching this and, and it, it does get you to read that book or, or reevaluate things, take away that you need to read books that make you uncomfortable. And sometimes you need to follow the trends of what book is big right now. I would highly recommend The Hate You Give. It's important. So, so incredibly important. And, and, and make your own opinion. Don't let some politician or, you know, educator who has potentially now some of these teachers may not even have read the book, you know, tell you that this book is wrong or that you don't have to read things to be uncomfortable because that's how you improve as a person. And that's how we improve as a society. We see things that make us feel uncomfortable. We evaluate them and we fix them. So that is the end of my long winded rant that I just needed to get out. You know, I, I just hope in, in five, huh, five years is kind of optimistic. I just hope by the end of my lifetime, honestly, I don't see it happening, but we as a society become better people because things like this really just make me disappointed in, you know, we're, we try, we, we attach this kind of privilege and superiority complex to being labeled as like a first world country. And then we do things like this and it's just honestly really disappointing to see. Friday evening. I got home from work a little while ago and I finished The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. It's Kate, not Katie. So finishing that brings me to five books this week, which I'm actually kind of surprised I was able to get to because I didn't get to do much reading last weekend. But nonetheless, I am really happy with that. 
So I'm going to be posting my weekly wrap up on Sunday as always. And I'm going to be doing my November TBR as well. Or sorry, my November wrap up. And I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's more me. So my plan is to post my Sunday weekly wrap up on Sunday morning. And then the Sunday afternoon or so, I'm going to post my monthly wrap up kind of fun thing that I'm going to do. So I just think it's much more me. And I, I think, I think... I think, I hope you'll like it, but I think you will. So yeah, I just finished the Alice Network and gonna just really quickly finish editing the vlog and then throw it up. My plans for this evening, I have dinner cooked. I made a, a frozen pot pie, but um, I'm going to try and get to page 150 or 200 or so of Earth's End, the third book in the Air Awakened series by Elise Kova. I am so, <sighs> the series is so good and it's so underrated. Ah. And because it's officially December, Yule Ball Bingo has started. So once again, I'll link it in the description below. But the Life and Lit Facebook book group is doing Yule Ball Bingo along with tons of other games. So definitely try and join in if you can. So with the beginning of December, I'm going to pick up my first book on my Yule Ball Bingo card, which is Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow. And I am so excited about this book. It's supposed to it's been like hyped up as like the next Harry Potter. I don't know if it'll ever be quite as big as Harry Potter, but it sounds so cool. There's like a, another world in school, like magic kind of stuff with like middle grade and all that stuff. So I'm so excited to start this. I'm going to follow along with the audiobook. Thanks for watching this week. What? Say bye. Can you speak for me? Speak! There we go.